Welcome back to Bluebell Island for episode 5 with me, Mr. Sealy P. I'm thinking of doing a silage harvest. That's what I'm thinking. At some point. Um, I'm at field 7. I've whizzed over. I just thought I'm, I'm sorting the water out for the animals. I was looking at the silage bunker silo um, and thinking I need to get either grass in that or do a silage harvest on a cornfield. Field 7 is ready to harvest and it's only 49,000 to buy. Um, you know, I've got enough money in the corn up top right hand corner, I'm buying it. Field 7 I now own. <coughs> it's not a huge field but it has got corn in it. I'm going to get the um, forage header, the trailed header type piece of equipment um, from the Massey Ferguson pack. Again, I'm not buying a big forage harvester. This is old school. I'd do it by hand if they'd give me a scythe. Um, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, whether that's the next episode or not, I don't know. But while well, the money's there in the top right-hand corner, let's get some more fields. Why not? Um, I also do need to get some corn for the pigs because I haven't got it in storage. Let me just have a look, actually. What have I got in storage? I've got a bit of everything, haven't I? Because I suppose I would have started with some. Um, what are we looking at? Corn, 6,000. I've got a little bit. So I have got enough that I can feed the pigs a bit more, but I could do with more. I've got soybean in the ground, I've got canola in the ground. I need to seed field four. Yeah, okay. I say this isn't so much about, I say it's not so much about making money. Obviously I want to make some money. I want to buy all the fields on the map. That's kind of the plan for this one. Um, they're not going to be expensive to buy all of them, but I do need to make some money. Um, but I do need to get those crops in because I want to feed the pigs properly without using pallets of pig food or the pig food silo. So this is the first step towards silage. Um, I probably could do with another cornfield, or I might use a little bit of this. We'll see how we get on. Anyway, right, uh, probably will be time for bed soon. I'm just doing a few odds and ends around the place. I thought I'd enjoy the sunset, actually. It's 6.21 in the morning. We didn't do too bad overnight. The cows actually made us some money. Uh, we went up by about 5,000, just over 5,000, I think it was, which is pretty good. I'm not knocking that at all. Um, got a few jobs ready to go straight off the bat. I bought field... One's gone blank. I showed it on the video clip, didn't I? Field 7 and field 16. Seven's got corn in it, 16 has got sugar beet in it. So that is going to need doing as well. I'm just lining up a few jobs, things for us to do while crops are growing. Now, to get to field 11, when I did the first barley harvest, I went through that kind of water splash out towards the sawmill. If you don't want to get your bales wet, you can actually actually come out here past field 10. I mean, it's going across the grass, but it's not, not too much of an issue. And there's another entrance around the back here behind field 10 which takes you to field 11 but interestingly ah oh, there you go right okay uh, field 11 isn't ready for weeding but field 18 is mind you this was seeded after I guess okay right so down to field 18 it is then The animals all are going to need a bit of work, not immediately, they've all got plenty of food, they're all in the green, um, so I will do a bit with them. The pigs are going to need some sorting out more, kind of importantly I guess. I, I worked on the cows yesterday but the pigs will need doing. So I'd say a few jobs need sorting out. I'm going to need straw seriously at some point for bedding and for more feed so I really do need to get field 3 planted as well. I think a right turn here. There we go. Field 18. Brilliant.
Now, I have the weeder on the back. Hope this has got enough oomph to pull it, but we'll, we'll soon see. I was up towards field 10 and 11 anyway, so I wanted to get a front weight because it hasn't got a three point linkage. Um, it takes the Massey Ferguson one that comes in the pack. Very, very small one, but it was just enough to keep the wheels off the floor. So they kept lifting up on the floor, not off the floor. Hang on, it's going to be alright. I should have put narrows on this. But because in the first growth stage, it doesn't seem to be having too much of a problem. Might just drop that down. And let's get weeding. I'm getting all sorts of suggestions for this map. Um, most of which are very sensible and great ideas and all that kind of thing. Some of which are a bit bizarre, but you know. It takes all sorts. I'm um, looking at, generally speaking, keeping this a low horsepower map. Westbridge Hills is kind of the one which is big bud territory and monster stuff. Um, I may at some point, bearing in mind our farm here on Bluebell Island hasn't really kind of moved with the times as such. I mean, let's be honest, we're not using uh, horses and that kind of thing. But uh, we might invest in a new tractor at some point, you know, something for the locals to talk about. But for the time being, we're going to carry on as we are. So if you're looking for big horsepower stuff, plenty of let's plays I've done, lots of different tractors. This one I thought I'd just have a change and go with low horsepower, older tractors and an older kind of slower style of gameplay. So this isn't your cup of tea, then by all means check out some of my others and see what you think. I am still going to get a sprayer. I'm going to get the small Amazon one, I think the orange one. Uh, I can't remember the actual number of it. Because once this gets to the next growth stage it's going to need spraying and I don't really want massive ones. I've got a fertiliser spreader, I've got this, once I've got enough manure and slurry I've got a manure spreader and a slurry spreader so I've got various different ways of sorting out the fertilisation on these fields. Right, I'm going to carry on and get this finished and then I'll see you, well for the next job hopefully. And that is field 18 complete. Okay, next job. I need to seed field 3. Work out whether I'll get through here with this on the back. I do need to leave this on, ready for when field 11 needs weeding. So, actually, I think what I might do. Just leave this parked up here. I can just whiz up and do that when that needs sorting out. Okay. Okay. Next tractor for a bit of seeding. Let's jump into the Deutzfahr. OK, 
okay. Why is your chickens? It's crazy, man. Get out of the way. Now, I've got it set on wheat already. Which is perfect. Hopefully I'm going the right way. I think so. Now when I come to my silage harvest on my new field, field 7, that's where things are going to get interesting. Because different people are telling me different things again. Turn it on. Whoa, this is a bumpy old uh, bumpy old cedar. So it's to bounce along. And as long as it's seeding, I'm not really bothered. Anyway, yeah. Um, apparently the um, the little forage trailed forage harvest thing doesn't tip into certain trailers or will only tip into the massive Bergson or so I'm gonna have to have a bit of fiddle out fiddle around with that. Well that was um yeah probably bumpy is the best way I can describe that. See the three point linkage. Bearing the brunt of that. Where is it going? I'll oh, just watch from the bushes now. Very nice indeed. I am seriously impressed at how well <coughs> this little 500 litre tank has lasted. This is by no means the biggest field on the map. Turn it off, lift it up. It will need refilling now, but it hasn't emptied. That's not a bad sized field, really, for 500 litres. If I just have a quick look in the store at sewing machines. And as we get further through here, I did say about buying that, the um, TF1500, to add additional tank capacity um, to the cedar. I'm not so sure if I need to. The cedar's only 4,600, the extra tank is 11,000. I could just buy a second cedar and have two tractors 
doing the same field. I'm just thinking, I'm looking at the map. I mean, field three is not huge, but for something like 17 or 5 or even 6, I guess, 21, 13, they're slightly bigger. A couple of cedars running on those? Might get away with it, you know. It's got to be cheaper than doing the other option. So I have a couple of cedars running. There we go. That solves that issue. Right, this will need refilling, but for the time being, I'm just going to put it away. Don't need it at the moment. I'm sure the next time I come to use it, I'll be like, what idiot left this and didn't fill it up? That'll be this idiot right here. Well, I've been told there is an update coming for this map. Hooray! You all know how much I love an update. Um, but, luckily for me, and it is luckily for me, um, it's summer holiday, school holiday. So, I'm off. Which means if there is an update, I've got a bit of time to sort it out. Um, whoops. Which isn't too much of a problem. So, on to the main job of the day then, I'm thinking. I might do that silage harvest, you know. Does mean I'm going to have to buy or at least lease. Which one was that I went for? The 110, not the 140. That'll be fine. I'm thinking, yeah, probably do that. Right, what tractor shall I use for that? The New Holland, I think. It's got a bit more oomph. Well, it's just got 145, hasn't it? Deutz far, but I've just used that. I'll go and find the New Holland. While I'm up at the store, a uh, quick look through, jump the hedge, there we go, okay brilliant, so field 11 is ready for weeding, so I can get the weeder up here, get on that, but what I'm trying to get done, the massive Ferguson, I've bought the 140, I'm going to need the larger capacity, and I've bought the massive Ferguson 260, this is supposed to be the um, kind of maize, corn, forage, harvester attachment there is a version in here under forage harvesters which is kind of the in-game the Pottinger Mex 5 at 38,000 then obviously our larger forage harvesters which are very expensive this was 7,200 so providing it works all right with a power requirement of 80 horsepower it's going to take a little while but that's what I said that's the whole point of this map what I have also done it's got a front weight, which I thought was kind of in keeping with... We've got a 55-gallon drum with a bit of concrete in it, I believe, is probably what's in it. Um, Colour-wise, I've been looking online about this, done a bit of research. There doesn't seem to be a universally accepted colour code around the world. I mean, there are colours that people agree are kind of what they should be. What happens these days, because they get repurposed and reused and kind of things... There are barcodes and numbers and things like that which tell you what the content should be. Green, I think, is supposed to be something like diesel fuel, blue, potable water, black, oil. Uh, I think red ones can be fuel, diesel as well. It depends. It, so I thought I'd go with a kind of maybe fuel, diesel type colour. Anyway, just wanted a front weight and I thought it'd be a bit different to a standard one that you get. Now comes the interesting part, whether this will actually work. So that's the first step. Not a lot of room in this yard, it would have helped if actually uh, the sort of spawn point was a little bit further back. So I'm not sure how easy this is going to hook up. But Okay, right. We have our travelling menagerie. Time to crack on then. Now I've got to remember I'm going. Best route from here. Um, let's go this way. Past Hillside Grain, I think. Now in my confusion of being an old man and that kind of thing. <laughs> Field number nine, which is just behind the spinnery there, 
has got sugar beet in it. And according to the map, we own it. Now, I can't remember if we started off on this game owning it or whether I bought it, but just forgot that I bought it. There you go, field number nine. So, I've just bought field 16 overnight, which has got sugar beet in it, and we've already got field of sugar beet. So, we will have an abundance of sugar beet for a while, which I'm sure I can sell. I don't want to drive through the field, do I? No. Past hillside grain. And then down to... Hoping there's a turning. Field 7. Fingers crossed. Oh, the bridge. Nice. There's not... Ah, oh, that's annoying. There's a hedge in the way. So excited for a minute there. That's the field we're doing, just there. Anyway, bear with me. Here we are. Fantastic. Right. This is where this all gets rather interesting. Okay, let's make sure I'm on the right thing. Let's open this out to its operating position. Uh, pipe out. There we go. Turn it on. And let's see how we get on with this, shall we? We are silaging. Ah, that was one of the things that we said you can't hire a worker. Not a problem. So I'm not sure how much I'm going to get off this silaging chaffing. How much chaff I will get. Hopefully it'll be enough to put in the uh, bunker silo for the cows, but... We are doing a silage harvest. Old school. Not a huge amount of room to turn around here. Let's lift that up. What I might have to do is the same principle with the ploughing. Go round and round, I think. Drop that back down. Try to hold 14,000 litres, I think. I did look again, the Marston um, silage trailer, Marston Ace, because I've got the standard one, the grain trailer, um, which was 20,000 litres, but I wasn't sure of the fact that, like I so said, the comments that have been left that the actual forage harvester won't tip into other trailers other than the Massey Ferguson. So, I don't know. As well as... Can I lower that? No, I have now. Um, as well as an update for this map, I believe there's an update for the Massey Ferguson uh, old generation pack as well. I think because a few of these little issues, I think with... Uh, maybe trailer um, compatibility and that kind of thing. I don't know. If it comes, it comes. We seem to get a flurry of mods and then nothing for a week or so and then a flurry more and that's kind of seems to be how it works but 
I would imagine it's an incredibly complicated process going through them, testing them, getting them ready. You think all the things they've got to be compatible with, I can imagine it's an absolute nightmare. So I'm in no way knocking the people that do it. In no way. Let's lift that up. Now, as you can imagine, this is going to take a little while. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on, and then when I get a full trailer load, we'll take it over to the dairy farm, which shouldn't be too far. I'm just thinking it's just one field over, directly ahead of us. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and we'll unload it, and that'll be our first load in the bunker silo. I'm not sure how much I'm going to get off this actually, not as much as I thought I would. So I might have to top up with grass as well, so we'll do a bit of grass cutting. But for the time being, let's get this done. Okay, 14,000 litres. Let's turn it off and lift it. Just get the trailer. Hmm, actually. Yeah, just get the trailer. Give myself a bit of space. Now, what I probably could have done with doing was getting another tractor over here to haul, I think. But I can leave this hooked up. So I'm going to get another tractor. Hang on. Hedge. The Zetor crystal. I'm not too sure. Zetor, Zetor. I think it's Zetor. It's not a Z, is it? Not an E sound. Should do fine for this. It's not going to be stupidly heavy, I don't think. And because I can't set a worker, it's no point bringing another trailer over and leaving the worker getting on with the uh, silage harvest while I go and haul because I can't set a worker. Maybe that is one of the issues, I don't know. You know what? Would it be easier just going around the field? Right then, let's spread this in here. First load done. Now, spreading is going to be probably all at that end. There's no point spreading it the full length of the bunker. I'll get everything I can off that field, see what I've got. I may need to top that with grass to make sure I've got enough silage to keep it going for a little while. I'm not going to need massive amounts, but and I can always do some uh, silage bales if I need to, but I'm just trying to avoid having to buy a... because I've now got the square baler. Um, rather than doing round bales, obviously I'm going to do square bales. That will mean then getting a square bale wrapper and you know, it all gets very confusing. Uh, so I thought doing silage might be an easier way around that. Okay, right back over to the field and I shall carry on. I will see you in a bit. So, off of field 7, I got three full loads, this is the third, with a few straggly bits left over, which gives me about 42,000, well it gives me exactly 42,000 litres. To put that into its equivalence, that's 10 bales, 
Stylish bales. So, I'm going to need to do some grass as well. Just to pad this all out, I'm definitely going to need to do some grass as well. And what I'm also going to do is um, I'm going to take the uh, forage header and put it back over there. What is that doing there? By the way, thank you. Um, what I'm going to do is leave the forage header over on that field. I'm going to replant that with corn, but I'm going to plough it, I'm going to fertilise it, because obviously I bought that field and nothing had been done to it. So 42,000 litres off that field with nothing done to it was, I, I thought, quite low for chaff. So what I'm going to do is work on it, reseed it with corn, and then do the same harvest again when it's ready, and see what the difference in yield is, because I'm curious as to what that yield's going to turn out to be. So, grass next. I need some more chaff in that bunker silo. But anyway, that's a silage harvest done anyway. Not as much as I was hoping for, but it is done. Let's go and put this stuff away. You might be wondering why I'm travelling up to field 11 and not doing the grass like I said I was going to. Um, the weather is grim. I noticed I was just doing a little bit of editing, putting together what I'd done already. And um, it's very dark and gloomy. And, uh, well, I say I apologise. I can't really. I apologise for the weather. Um, can't do a lot about it, but there you go. It is what it is. Um, Yes, I thought, well, this needs to be weeded. Oh, I've dropped off that front weight again, haven't I? Keep doing that. Pick it up. Oh, come on. Is it tipped over? How did I manage to do that? Never mind, ignore me while I'm wittering on about the front weight. Um, yeah, I thought I'd end the episode how I started it, really, doing some weeding. And I will do the grass at the start of the next episode. Set that down. That's better. Right, now we're getting somewhere. Um, yeah, I'll start the next episode with the grass. I have set the Zetor with the fertilizer spreader on field 7 where we just did the silage harvest. So that's preparing it ready for ploughing for the next step with that field. But that is the end of this episode. Um, we've weeded, we've seeded. We've done a silage harvest and uh, just kind of day-to-day -day stuff on the farm, which is what this Let's Play series is supposed to be about. It's not about banging along at 100 miles an hour. It's not about making mega money. It's not about, you know... I think our everyday lives, our real lives, are crazy enough as it is. Time to slow it down a little bit. It's about the journey, not the destination. Barris, that one's for you. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed the episode, give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share the video, please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.